words to speak if no one prays. These very stones cry out. Shalom, hello again, and welcome to our new series, The Stones Cry Out. We traveled from Dan to the Dead Sea, from the Mediterranean to Petra, and <laughs> that's quite an area, uh, looking at archaeological digs, updating them, finding out uh, what's going on these days. And these archaeological digs prove the Bible to be a reliable book. Uh, Dr. Tom McCall, our uh, senior theologian with the ministry, helped us to interview the archaeologists and, and learn their thoughts. And Tom, you had some thoughts about this series. Well, what's so important, Zola, is that uh, at any given time, any given year, uh, there may be a couple of dozen uh, digs going on over in Israel, and also there's some in Jordan, uh, all over the Bible lands, and every one of them shows something about the Bible, teaches something, proves uh, something about the Bible history, or it illuminates uh, something, uh, biblical history. And uh, we, we were able to uh, go over there with our TV crew and actually capture uh, the, the sites as they are and, and interview the scholars, the archaeologists, and find out what was really going on. Because as it is, only a few scholars really know what's happening over there. And our purpose was to bring back to our viewing public, Zola, the exciting things that are happening in biblical archaeology today. This is going to be fun to watch, I'm sure. You know, the, the archaeologists are stuck between political forces these days. A perfect example is this tunnel, the Hasmonean tunnel that runs along the Western Wall that we're going to look at on this program. There were false accusations the Israelis disturbed Muslim holy sites. The media was awful in their reports, and in the end, 70 people died in rioting, really unnecessarily. Tom spoke to David Dolan about that, and I spoke with Danny Bahat, the senior archaeologist there at the Western Wall. He began by telling me that the tunnel did not interfere with the Muslim locations. That's a view of the old city from the north. You can see the praying plaza, which is here. Our tunnels go all the way along the western wall, and this is the point where we got into the Maccabean aqueduct, which goes all the way down to here, painted in blue. The last part is the part, the artificial tunnel we made to go out here. We made this plan in order to show, really, that we've got nothing to do with the Temple Mount precinct. We are all the way out, and you see we came even further from the abutting wall, uh, tunnel which we had before. We went all the way as far as possible to one of the widest streets in the old city of Jerusalem. The entrance to the tunnel is here on the map and located adjacent to the Western Wall Plaza. Danny and I began our journey at this point. The labyrinth of narrow passages is more than 400 yards long and reveals over 2,000 years of history. The first segment of the tunnel is an arched walkway built by the Mamluks some 700 years ago. Its purpose is to support the roadway above. A few hundred feet further, the passageway opens into a spectacular subterranean room. The finely fashioned stones of this Herodian structure speak of a Jewish legacy dating back to the Second Temple. Danny Bahad explains. This room is, dates from the time of Herod the Great. Uh -huh. Actually, it is the only building hitherto found in the country, all built of ashlar, which means square-cut stones in such a manner in a minor building, because we know we have masonry, beautiful ashlar masonry, on the western wall in the cave of the Patriarchs at Hebron. But as a kind of a room, this is the first one hitherto discovered in such a shape. What is it really from Herod's time? I don't really know. There are many suggestions like the Chamber of Eshlar, which was the Supreme Court of Appeal during the Second Temple period, but I don't know. Yes. But otherwise, it must have been a building of great importance. The problem is that its shape was completely distorted during the early Arab period when it was used to a kind of a workshop where the smelted metal, because when we excavated here, we found many slags and other and furnaces and all kind of things. We've got cleaned it in order to bring it to the shape as it was more or less as it was during the Second Temple period, let's say the time of Christ. 
Now, altogether, what I'd like to say that walking all the way here, we walked under domes and vaults which date from the late medieval, namely from what we call the Mamluk period, 14th, 15th century. And we came down to this place, which is 1st century BC. Okay, we, as we went downstairs, of course, we, we went back uh, hundreds of years, a thousand years. It's true, that's the idea. Because the, you see, this tunnel of, the system of tunnels where we are now, which started to be, which they started to dig in 1968, following the Six Day War, this system of tunnels, I think today, is the most important site in Jerusalem. Why? Because the history of Jerusalem has undergone many vicissitudes during history. And in these tunnels, every period of those periods is somehow represented. It may be, for example, the early Arab period is represented by repair works on the Western Wall. The Memluk, they covered the Western Wall in order to lift or actually to, yes, to raise the level of the old city to the present level because of various other reasons to which we'll refer later. And altogether, every period is re represented somehow. This room is actually the acme of the second temple period if we don't speak about the Western Wall, because the Western Wall, of course, is the reason for the whole thing. Yeah. Now, this uh, uh, running nearby here are two tunnels. One, I understood the archaeologists built in order to uh, study along the Western Wall. The other is the one that was in the news recently. Yes. We have excavated two of them. Actually, the first one, as you said, is an artificial tunnel bored by archaeologists in, uh, since 68 in order to expose the Western Wall. We went along all kinds of systems of retaining walls, vaults, arches, all kinds of things which are still to be analyzed, but in principle we understand what they are. Yeah. At the end of it, we, hit in, we came into a tunnel which was bought by the Maccabees, namely in the second century BC. It is called either Maccabees or Hasmoneans, which is synonyms. But 200 this, years before Christ. 200 years before Christ. Now, the thing is that this is something of extreme importance, not only because of the beauty of the site, which we'll see later, not only because of the impression one gets when he walks there, but also because it is the most important remain ever found in this country before pertaining to the, sec to the Maccabean period. Wow. This is really unique. Also, because of that, we have exposed the remains, which are very scant but still are quite significant, of the palace of the Maccabees, which was to the north of the Temple Mount of that time, completely destroyed and shaved away by Herod the Great when he extended the Temple Mount and built Antonia Fortress, the famous fortress which played such an important role in early Christianity. Okay, the Maccabees were a family uh, uh, that existed and revolted against uh, the uh, Syrophoenicians who were uh, controlling the land against Antiochus, if I'm right. And uh, uh, they had a palace here, as you're explaining. Yeah. Now, that family, it was, came actually, it was the rural aristocracy in our country, in Judah. Yes. And in the second century, when there were two trends amongst the Jews living in the country who were under the yoke of the Seleucids. Seleucids were the heirs of Alexander the Great. Now, there were two tendencies in the country, to accept the Hellenistic way of life, way of life or to preserve the authentic Jewish life. Okay. The fight almost ended with the encouragement of the Seleucids, namely of those, let's say, Greek or orientated rulers of the country, to go into really Greek oriented way of life. But uh, the, there was a kind of a, a zeal amongst the rural people to maintain Jewish ways of life. That family, which comes from a little town named Modi'in, which is not far from Jerusalem, it's about 30 miles from Jerusalem, they rebelled and they managed to organize a whole revolt against the Seleucids. Finally, Judah received its independence, and for over 200 years, Judah was an independent country. And that established the holiday called the Hanukkah. Han because of their victory, we celebrate to this very day the Hanukkah holiday, yeah. and which is actually to commemorate not only the victory of the Seleucids and the reconstruction of the temple, but also it is in order to commemorate the great miracle which occurred when the Jews managed to kindle 
the candelabrum for eight days, although the ewer, the little pure oil they found, could suffice only for one day. And this is really the main reason, because it was a miracle. It was a divine miracle. To take your attention back to the tunnel then, it is sort of, well, it's more than sort of, it is a real proof of, of the, the Jewish primacy in this land at that time. Definitely. When we will walk along the western wall of the Temple Mount, you must remember that we are actually walking along the most magnificent structure in antiquity. I always say in a kind of a joke that the world knows about seven marvels of the ancient world. I say always there were nine. The ninth being, why didn't the Temple Mount in Jerusalem become the eighth? Because by far more it exceeds any other structure of, of antiquity. For example, one of the marvels were the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Yes. You could take three and a half of the Great Pyramids and to put them on the Temple Mount. Oh. Now, the thing is that it is really a unique structure, and you will see. We are walking and walking and walking along one wall, which originally was very high, in some places over 200 feet high. And you are walking along it with beautiful masonry, very well executed. So all that can give you really the impression how big it was. The problem we have today, that unfortunately we came again to that phase when we've got to prove that Jerusalem is holy to us and the Temple Mount was built by a Jewish king. And this is something which I thought will never occur again. And indeed it comes here again because, you know, we've got to be a kind of a, to try to explain what we are doing and how. The Jews who pray at the Western Wall want to know, which is the holiest place to Judaism at present, want to know all, so to say, the secrets of the Western Wall. Where does it start? Where does it end? And this was really the purpose of the tunnel, of digging the tunnel, and I think we gave all the answers in a most satisfactory manner. Yeah. So now, with this tunnel, Doug, people from the wall can walk all the way through and come out at the Via Dolorosa in the Muslim yeah, quarter yes. of Jerusalem? Which means they can walk over, I would say, about 400 yards. Uh -huh to see the greatness of the Western Wall and to come out in the Via Dolores of today. When we return, we'll journey deep inside the tunnel to the very base of the Western Wall. And later on, why did the media make so many mistakes in reporting the tunnel incident? We'll get a journalist's perspective. And I think there was a, a, real, um, a real stepping back and saying, we'll just report what people are saying. We won't actually go in and do any investigative reporting ourselves. That's the safest way to approach it. Come with Zola Levitt and see for yourself the land of the covenant. Uh, other people said they went on cruises or, and trips like this, and it was all historical, and they saw a lot of size, but this was spiritual, and this was really good. So I'm really glad I picked Zola Levitt's uh, group to tour the Holy Land. Tour the Holy Land with Zola Levitt. Call or write for more information. So far, we've seen the first part of the tunnel and the magnificent Herodian structures within. And now we'll move along the base of the wall to the area excavated since 1968 along the Western Wall. At first, what we see here is the Western Wall to our right-hand side. Uh -huh. This is actually the last point in it, and it is all carved in the rock because Herod the Great really destroyed everything which was before him. And, he, and what he did was to put here, down below, it is natural rock, and to bring one course of stones, which you see here. Oh, this is on top of the bedrock. Yes, that, that's bedrock. Down below, this is bedrock. I see. And above it, he built this. But the most exciting of all the stones in the western wall is the one which you see here. Because here you can see how he brought it from the quarry. You see, completely rough. Yes. Here you see the crescentic movements of the chisels when he smoothed it, oh, really? and here it is already finished. It is the only stone along the entire story where you can see on one stone, you can see this, you can see this, and you can see that. Oh, yeah. So it shows us that actually all the stones were hewn when they were already installed in place. I see. You understand? He it put it in the wall, then he, he worked. He brought it roughly, he walked on the side, and here it is the final shape of it. Mm. You see, and here's another stone like that. You can see this one is a game. You see, it is already smooth and beautiful, but here you can see it is very rough. Oh, yeah. Now, we are now in, this is the end of the Western Wall. The Western Wall ends here like that. 
And as we go this little flight of steps, we'll find ourselves in the Maccabean Tunnel. At this point, we left the segment of tunnel dug by archaeologists, and we entered the Hasmonean Tunnel. Originally an aqueduct, it was constructed over 2,000 years ago to supply water to the Maccabean Palace further south. The winding channel walls stretch higher and higher toward the old city above. You see how it is going higher and higher? Yes. The reason is that actually they never bought it as a tunnel. They excavated it from top, and then they covered it with slabs, and then it became a tunnel. Ah. But the thing is, the hill is higher the further north we go. Oh, yes. And since we go northwards, look at that. It really looks like a canyon in the desert. Now, the thing is that it was made by the Maccabees in order to supply water to their palace. Till the discovery of this tunnel, which, by the way, was discovered already in the 19th century, but the explorers there didn't understand what exactly it was. Uh -huh. So what they did was they didn't know how to, to whom to attribute it. Now, we know very well that it is pre-Herodian, because Herod the Great built a dam here in order to stop the water which came along this aqueduct uh -huh. was actually to stop it from going into the western wall and to flood his works there. But the fantastic thing is that when we go up to the top and you see the canyon, the view over the canyon is really marvelous. And if you think that you are under the old city, it is really fascinating. Oh, yes. We oh. made a glass bridge so that you can see that water still flows underneath. Oh, yes. You can see it down there. You see the, fa the ceiling is reflected in the water. Oh, yes. And this is really a unique thing altogether, to see the entire height of oh, the tunnel from bottom to top. We continued our ascent to the end of the Hasmonean segment of tunnel, entering the final part of the tunnel system. Excavation completed here in 1993 stopped 12 inches short of breaking through onto the Via Dolorosa. Shown here on the map, tradition holds Christ walked this street to his crucifixion. Finally, in 1996, negotiations between Islamic and Jewish authorities resulted in the approval and creation of the tunnel exit. At first, all was calm. However, Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat made misleading statements regarding the tunnel location, which incited riots, killing 70 and injuring hundreds. Speaking near the exit, Danny explains Arafat's deception. He diffused in the Internet and everywhere a map of our tunnels as if they go under the two mosques on the Temple Mount. We published a map of the walk, as we do in every excavation. And he took the same map which we have published and moved it, the tunnel he put on the Temple Mount between the two mosques. That's what he did. And everyone, was be everyone believed, no one could believe that a leader of, let's say, a nation with national aspirations can lie to the world in such a manner. And this is actually what he did. This politically threatens. David Dolan, veteran journalist and resident of Jerusalem, spoke with Dr. McCall about the events. Why do we get this kind of uh, wrong information or misinformation or disinformation? The Palestinians presented it as a tunnel that affected the mosque on the Temple Mount. So they left the impression that it did go actually underneath the Temple Mount. And the media just reported that without actually checking on the facts, going down there and looking at it or whatever. And it took a few days for it to be clarified, even here locally in the media, that this tunnel runs on the outside of the Western Wall, that it's an ancient tunnel, nothing that has just been built. It was an ancient water tunnel of the Hasmonean period and therefore has nothing to do with the moss itself. But again, it's precisely on the Temple Mount itself that the Islamic claim to be the final revelation of truth, the final faith, the supreme faith, was, they believe, concretely demonstrated by them capturing the Temple Mount from, at that time, in 638, Byzantine Christians. And yet, these tunnels that you have excavated show that you were here many centuries before the birth of Mohammed even. Definitely. It, was, it were the Jews who brought the Arabs here during the creation of the, of the Islamic Empire in the 7th century. Because they, when they came here, they didn't know what they were coming to. It was a converted Jew, a man called Kabel Akbar, who brought them and showed them the holiness of the Temple Mount. 
and they were deliberating, and we have got it from Arab sources, they were deliberating where to build a mosque because they had no, there was no importance whatsoever to Jerusalem in their eyes. And archaeology is at the heart of this whole controversy uh, over who owns what and who has the uh, most claim to these properties. It's an amazing thing that archaeology would have such an impact on international history. Well, it is, and it's a frustrating thing for local archaeologists who just want to go out and do their job. I'm talking about Israelis and Arabs and international archaeologists who just want to go and search for ancient things, and they keep finding that whatever they find affects today's political struggle, and that they're pulled this way and they're pulled that way. Even with the political pressures, Danny, knowing the importance of archaeological findings for all faiths, continues his work at the Temple Mount. The tunnel, the idea of the tunnel is to expose to the Jewish world the sanctity of the Temple Mount. Moreover, in this respect, since it refers to the Second Temple period, it is also of great importance to the Christian world. To the Muslims, our tunnel is important because from the scientific, scientific point of view, we have revealed here layers of Islamic develop, urban development of Jerusalem of which they never knew before. So altogether, instead of, I will say, encouraging the fact that we have got a site which everyone, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, can find, each of them, something which will warm his point, I mean, he, uh, will warm his heart with a certain point of his legacy, they made a whole mess of it. And this is really, I'm afraid it is typical thing. And that's why I'm so furious, because I know that there were agreements and understandings which the world denied, and unfortunately the media took part in this denial. What did you think of the early reporting that came out about the uh, tunnel episode? Well, Tom, as a journalist who's lived here and reported from here for 16 years, I've got to say I was a bit disappointed in it. Um, journalists know that all of these issues are very political and emotional, etc. They know that sometimes we get uh, a slanted version of what's going on, and there was, I think, a very uh, limited attempt to check the facts. Um, we had, uh, for instance, archaeologist Danny Bahat, who's so involved in this, and uh, yet he wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't consulted by the international media. The BBC, uh, CNN, and others repeated the. Uh, report that the Israelis have opened a tunnel. Well, of course, it was just an exit to the tunnel, a door that had been put in. So that was very, very misleading. And they didn't go down and look at the thing, too. I was waiting for one of the international networks to have a camera crew go through it and say, this is where it begins, this is where it ends, this is where it is in relation to the mosque, etc. And we didn't see that at all. So it was very shallow reporting, I thought. What if the Muslims and Jews really worked together? I wish it were. I'll tell you, my experience now is, and I'm, of course, you can imagine I want this peace and everything. Even with Egypt, with which we signed almost 20 years ago a peace agreement, you don't see any scientific collaboration in no way in archaeology. With Jordan, I hope it will work better. To the present, <coughs> there is nothing. I wonder if, if the Arabs will do it uh, at all, but especially you, on Jerusalem. I wonder. I would like very much. You would hope it Yes, would. but remember that still the, the feeling that we are part of the Middle East has not yet seeped to their mind. Wow. That's where the problem starts and that's where it ends. Well, Tom, a 2,000-year-old aqueduct, the Herodian Room, these things show the accuracy of the Bible reportage and the Jewishness of, of these sites. Yeah, the Bible tells that the Jewish people were in the land and, and in Jerusalem and uh, that the Hasmoneans, the Maccabees, all during the intertestamental period were building things around the Temple Mount. And then Herod comes along and he builds... Uh, the, the enclosure walls of the Temple Mount and all these tunnels and everything. And 
now after 1900 years, archaeologists go down there and they find exactly what the Bible says existed there and that the Jewish people had done all those things just uh, as the scriptures had said. Oh, the archaeology really strengthens your faith. It, it shows accurate reportage from the Bible. I only wish the media today were as accurate. You know, uh, when they did the tunnel reporting, even you, who, who know the sites, you were confused. I was over here in America, and we got the first reports on the radio and TV, and it was so garbled as to where the tunnel was and what its significance was. And at first they were reporting that the tunnel w went under the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock inside the Temple Mount. And, and you, you couldn't get it straight as to what was the uh, actual placing. And it wasn't until a week or so later that the news uh, reports came out with actual maps showing that the tunnel was right along the western wall. Yeah, in the meantime, Arafat uh, improved his political position at a cost of many lives uh, with deceptive maps and so forth obnoxious situation. The Stones continue to cry out next week. Tune in. We'll have more uh, from the Temple Mount, the hottest spot on the earth, I guess you'd say, and also a very interesting uh, discussion with the archaeologist on the Samaritan Temple. Tom, I sure appreciate all you've done in this program, and thanks for uh, coming out to uh, help us out. Good to be with you, Zola. Okay, and Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. to glory.